No, I think you have to focus on what you're good at. Yeah. I think companies are built inside out, not by analogy or by looking at what's hot and and and, and what's working. I, you know, for for us, we're a bunch of math geeks who yeah. started the company, right? We don't know anything about making food, right? Yeah. And in fact, <laughs> you know, our, our idea is, you know, let each side of the marketplace be. Um, for our restaurant tours. They know how to make food, yeah, right? And they know that best. They know that way better than we will ever know, right? Our dashers make it as easy as possible for them to work. Um, and, and, and our consumers obviously make it, you know, uh, reduce as much friction as we can from the ordering process. And, you know, for us, you know, we know how to write software. How do we, yeah. why do we have so many software products? It's because most of the software actually no one sees. It's to, you know, figure out um, how do we make smart decisions every single time? How do we learn from the, how do we train our own systems to learn from those decisions over time so that we can use technology to offer the logistics and the power of that to all these merchants? Are there some things that just don't work in terms of this like food delivery that you just say like, we, we should just eliminate this sector of restaurants or this area? Because I know when I lived in LA, I lived in Brentwood and uh, I had friends who lived up the hill in Bel Air and they just, they, no restaurants would ever deliver there because finding the house and literally like the time from the gate at the house up to the house was probably as long as delivering something in Santa Monica. Like for a lot of these houses, they would just, would take them literally 90 minutes to get food delivered. It was, and if they would deliver it at all. Yeah. So there, you're right. There are definitely uh, certain deliveries that are more difficult than, than others, right? Um, you know, for us though, we're always about offering the widest selection. And, yeah. and, and for us to be able to do something like that to all of our customers and make, you know, delivery accessible to everyone, kind of have to serve everyone. Really? And, 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 but look, you can make, even within, you know, that mission, um, you can make smart decisions, right? And right. you can edit the product. Right. And you can edit the systems. Um, but the, but it, it takes a lot of work. Do you charge more for certain long hauls or? Nope. So the same amount, can you deliver to like Bel Air up in the hill and everything like that just as easily as Westwood? I, I didn't say just as easily. Oh, yeah. you'll, just, you'll still do it. <laughs> yeah, we'll, 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 we still do deliveries. See, I think a more fair system would be the time it takes to deliver is like in an area like LA or the distance. Like there has to be some sort of a surcharge because if you just think about the people who are the, you know, sure they could average it out, but what a bummer if you have to like take your little scooter or your bicycle from Westwood all the way up to Bel Air and climb that hill it's impossible, like to make that run work. Sure, and it's up to so, but but it's up to DoorDash. It's up to us, ah. right, to make that decision. In in the sense mm -hmm. that, you know, how do we? And this is what I was saying earlier, yeah. right? Like this is really a complicated math problem, right? right? Keep it simple for the consumer, easy to understand, flat fee, right? But how do we then, you know, build the technology, everything in the background to make a set of you know choices such that the system works in a very simple way? Ah. So you could actually say, hey, door dasher, to the dasher, you're going to get 2x for bringing this all the way up the hill maybe or something if it's a longer distance. You could you could have variable payments for the deliveries. Sure. Yeah, are there variable payments for the deliveries? There can be, yes. There can be, yeah. See, that makes sense to me. So you have figured that out. I was wondering because what, what my friend used to do was he would literally call you know, a restaurant in Westwood and say, I'm going to give you a $50 tip to bring up this $150 in food or $100 in food <laughs> when he'd have people over and say, I'll literally put $50 delivery service on it and I'll give the guy a, t a 20-buck tip. Just I know it's a pain in the ass. And like that was the only option he had. He had to literally call them and lobby them. And even then they would be like, we just can't do it. It's going to take the guy an hour to get up there and back. Sunset's a disaster. Yeah, I mean, Whatever. you, you want to start by offering a very simple to understand low friction type of product. Yeah. Right. And it's up to you, the company, to figure out the complications. Hey, everybody. I want to talk about one of my favorite addictions, Audible. I listen to audiobooks constantly because I love nonfiction. I love learning. And I'm big into bios. So my Audible pick for this month, this week, whatever amount of time it's going to take you to listen to it. I think you listen to it in about a week. Um, is The Man Who Knew Infinity, a, a Life of the Genius, Raman John. And this book is amazing. It is about uh, an Indian clerk who is a math genius and who filled three or four books with math theories and um, uh, formulas that today inform how we interpret black holes and um, a true genius who then went to England to study and it is being made into a film, which I was lucky enough to just see. 
and it's got Jeremy Irons and uh, Dave Patel in it. It is an amazing, and Stephen Fry, and just an all-star cast. And I just saw this movie, uh, and it is very powerful and a great, great film. And, you know, making math, you know, interesting, very hard to do. And there's a lot of these people who are, did seminal, incredible work, and you would never know them. The book is by Robert Kangle, and I actually saw the author speak. Uh, with the director recently uh, at a screening. And I, you know, immediately when I got invited to the screening, I said to myself, I'm going to go to screening for this book. But, you know, I want to go deeper. I always want to know not just the 90 minute or 120 minute version, but I like to read the original source material and I like to listen to it. I'm constantly in the car. I'm driving between things. Sometimes I got to take my daughter to a kid's party and then there's other parents there. I don't want to talk to them. So I pretend I'm on a conference call. Really, I'm listening to an Audible book. While the kids are playing, the kids don't want to be involved with the parents, but the parents don't want to talk to me about some crazy nonsense. I just say, oh, i got to go make a phone call. I secretly listen to a little bit of Audible. So go check out The Man Who Knew Infinity. It is an amazing audiobook, and it is going to get my highest recommendation. Of course, if you're not into bios, there are a ton of other interesting books. One I'm reading um, on my hikes through the uh, NorCal Mountains is Amusing Ourselves to Death uh, by Neil Postman, who is, a, I believe, a New York university media kind of uh, Marshall McLuhan type professor and amusing ourselves to death is my backup here if you want to listen uh, to an amazing book from 1985 about media and media theory and television versus uh, the printed word in newspapers and before that books and how illiterate and how television has become a huge nonsensical mess um, we are actually amusing ourselves to death. If you look at what's happening in this election this year, um, you know, this is a really interesting book to go back and listen to, especially. And the way I wound up wanting to listen to Amusing Ourselves to Death was I had Keith Raboy at the launch festival. You may have heard that episode here. And he just mentioned casually, like when I was asking him about Donald Trump and Cruz and Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders, he said, yeah, you know, it reminds me of uh, this incredible book, Amusing Ourselves to Death. And I was like, oh, yeah, I didn't read that. And this is one of the things I love about audiobooks is, you know, sometimes you get older, you're whatever, you're 30 years old, you're 40 years old, you're 50 years old. You're supposed to have read some books. You know, you're supposed to be an expert. Listen, I'm supposed to be an expert on media and technology. I never read Amusing Ourselves to Death. I, and I, I may have read a chapter or two when I was younger on the book. And now I have Audible. I listen to it on my hikes. I go for a two-hour hike. I, you know, knock out two out of the seven hours. Boom, I got another hike. Wipe out another two or three hours. Go to the gym. I reward myself when I exercise with Audible. I reward myself uh, when I'm driving with Audible. I like to make myself smarter. Thank you so much to our friends at Audible for supporting this episode. Get a free audiobook right now, like The Man Who Knew Infinity or Amusing Ourselves to Death. Uh, and you can just go to audible.com slash twist, audible.com slash twist. Um, you know, some of my past recommendations, uh, the, the Hobbit, um, you know, read by Robert Inglis is amazing. My daughter and I love listening to that. We've listened to the first three chapters over and over again because she likes certain scenes, like when the dwarfs are singing and breaking plates. Um, and then before that, I did Building Great Sentences because you guys know I sold my book and it will be on Audible at some point next year. And I wanted to write better sentences. So I, I just, I, I got this Building Great Sentences and it's really helped uh, me do better sentences in my writing and, uh, you can access your stuff from iPhones, iPad, Android, Windows, you know all that. What's really interesting is I have an iPad, I have my phone, and a lot of times I'll go from my iPad to my phone and it remembers where I was. So if you forget and like, you know, my phone died on the hike, then I plugged in my iPad and I was listening on my deck, it remembered where I was and it caught me up when I was listening to Amusing Ourselves to Death. 180,000 titles in every genre and they're doing some really interesting stuff with channels and podcasting. There's a bunch of stuff going on with Audible that you'll read about in the news. Um, they're just an amazing company. I love it. Download my book of the week for free by signing up at audible.com slash twist. You can only get that free book by going to audible.com slash T-W-I-S-T. And they love to see you do that. So make sure you tell your mom, your dad, your cousin, your brother, your sons, your daughters, your friends, your enemies. Tell them to go to audible.com slash twist and get a free book. The Man Who Knew Infinity. A great, great listen. And... Amusing ourselves to death, another great listen. Okay, let's get back to this amazing interview. Mm -hmm. 